feel like I don't need to add oil. Yeah, we're just gonna, whatever. Okay. Oh, I'm gonna sneeze. Ooh, ooh. No, it's gone. It's gone! Okay. and welcome back to Cheap Lazy Vegan and another recipes video. Today's video is very kindly sponsored by Care Of and today guys, we are doing some Korean recipes lazy style. Yes, I wanna make some Korean inspired dishes and I wanna do it in a very lazy way. So Korean food can be a lot of work. It can be a lot of different ingredients. It can feel really overwhelming. So if that is something that you're experiencing, then well, welcome to this video because it's gonna make Korean food a lot easier for you and hopefully you'll fall in love with it and then you'll make some other things as well. So yeah, we're gonna keep things super simple, super easy, and of course 100% vegan. And as always, if you guys need the written recipes and everything, that will be in a blog post link down below so don't worry okay we're gonna do three recipes today and we're just gonna get started this is a recipe number one all right guys so this recipe is going to be a really simple gochujang fried rice i did a video once making lazy bibimbap which is a korean mixed rice but in a lazy form and i did it all in one pan so it's kind of similar to that but like maybe even lazier because we're using just simpler ingredients this is just a very quick thing that you could make if you're just hungry and you want a flavorful delicious meal make this okay so let's just start okay so we need we need a pan here a big enough pan for your fried rice needs and i'm just going to spray with a little bit of oil eh, if i can this spray thing is it stresses me out you know what i don't like it let's just use screw it <laughs> just a bit of oil okay this is maybe like i don't know half a tablespoon or something let this heat up a little bit and one thing that you could do, uh, which I love doing, because Korean people, we love garlic and everything. I'm sure you guys know. So you can actually buy like crushed garlic. We actually buy this at the store. So it's really simple and easy. It's basically minced garlic, but like ready to go. Or you can use my garlic hack if you want to save some money because this is a little bit more expensive. So the garlic hack, link is down below for that video. Anyways, so we're just going to heat this oil. We're going to do about, I would say a quarter of an onion. This was a very large onion. To a quarter of an onion. I mean, you don't have to do onion if you don't want to, but onion's always good, you know? Just let's saute that for a little bit. I think this needs a little bit more heating up. All right, guys, so it is starting to sizzle. We're liking it. Sound of music. Anyways, now we can add some garlic. Again, if you're Korean, if you're cooking Korean food, you gotta be generous with the garlic. So, I don't know, like a tablespoon-ish, maybe a little less um, or more, up to you. We're gonna saute this for another little bit, but let's also add in some frozen mixed vegetables. Yes, this is a lazy girl's dream. This is like a cross between like a bibimbap and a fried rice, I would say. There we go. And now, rice. You're gonna need rice, okay? So this is cooked rice, it's already cooked. If you have day old rice, it's even better, but you can, you know, if it's freshly cooked, that's fine. We're doing one cup of rice. Let's add this in. Now, Korean style rice tends to be a little bit stickier. We use short grain rice, which is stickier. It's basically the same thing as sushi rice. Just FYI. And there we go. Okay, so we've got this mixed. Ah, my arm is tired. Now, we need some protein, my friends. You can add in however much protein you want. I have about a quarter cup of chickpeas. You can add in half a cup. You can add in a third cup. Up to you. Totally up to you. You can also add in something like vegan hot dogs, sliced stuff, I think that would be fantastic. Any other type of bean would be fantastic. All right, now we have this, and now the star of the show. <laughs> gochujang. So we have this giant tub of gochujang. I've, I've shown you guys this before. It's like industrial size, love it. I mean, I use gochujang for everything. And my roommate's also Korean, so we just use this. Like, this is just an everyday ingredient for us. So, this is Korean red chili pepper paste. I talk about it all the time. It is delicious. It is a thick, thick, spicy paste. And it looks like this. It's full of flavor. It is so good, and you're gonna use it in like every Korean dish. So, if you enjoy Korean cooking, highly recommend getting yourself some. If you go to any Korean store, you'll be able to find it. Or even any Asian store, most of the time they will have this. 
So I'm going to start with adding in one tablespoon. And you can add in just one tablespoon depending on your spice tolerance. But I'm probably going to end up adding in another tablespoon because I'm a big fan. This itself is full of so much flavor that you don't need to add really anything else. So I added about one and a half tablespoons. Um, but again, if you are not so good with spice, maybe add less, okay? It's up to you. So at this point, I'm actually gonna turn the heat off and just use the residual heat. Mm. This is also a very important, crucial ingredient, sesame oil. Now this one is a, I think it's a Chinese sesame oil. Us Koreans, we're very uh, snobby and we like to only use Korean sesame oil, but I assume it's a, you know, it's similar enough. I think the Korean one's better. But anyways, we were desperate for sesame oil. We didn't have time to go to the Korean supermarket. So we're using Chinese sesame oil. So you can free pour, up to you. I'm just gonna measure it out. I'm gonna say about one teaspoon of the sesame oil. This stuff is potent. It is not really used for the cooking aspect. It's more so to add flavor. It smells delicious. And that's it. You can eat it out of the pan, up to you. This is how simple it is. If you have you know, like some rice already, like day old rice, like old rice. This is such a quick and easy meal. It literally takes like five minutes and you have a delicious Korean style gochujang fried rice. Okay. All right, you guys, so that's pretty much it. You can just kind of enjoy this straight out of the pan, up to you. And the beauty of this is like, if you leave it in the pan, it actually might make it nice and like crispy on the bottom, you know? Um, if you had bibimbap, in a Korean restaurant, you may have experienced the stone, like the hot stone bibimbap, and then it makes the rice like nice and crispy. So you can almost like replicate that, just eat it straight out of the pan, okay? Gives you a reason to be extra lazy. Anyways, um, another few additional touches, if you are being fancy, which you don't have to be. Uh, number one, some roasted seaweed. This is another uh, kind of ingredient that every Korean person probably has in their house, in their pantry. One thing that bugs me about this is the plastic and the amount of packaging that is used, but what you gonna do? Okay, this stuff is very addictive. So just take a few. You can also just eat it like, you know, make a little sushi thing, okay? And then just, you know, or just, you know, crumble, crumble, okay? And then just like, like so. So this stuff adds a lot extra flavor too because this already is seasoned, you see? Oh my God, like it's gonna be so good. And then another little extra touch if you want to be fancy, toasted sesame seeds, okay? Or roasted sesame seeds. This again, you can find in the Korean supermarket. It comes toasted, highly recommend the toastedness. It adds more of that delicious savory flavor, okay? So just pop that on there. There you go. Should we give it a taste? I think we need to give it a taste. Okay, let's give it a taste. Okay guys, we're gonna give it a taste straight out of the pan because we are doing lazy today. We are full on lazy. Are we excited for this? I am excited. Mmm. Woo! Mmm. Five minutes. That's all you need. Five minutes, make this, it's delicious. It's spicy. If you don't like spice, then um, you can't really make this <laughs> because you know a lot of the flavor comes from the gochujang. So if you don't like spice as much, add less gochujang. Maybe add a little bit of soy sauce to balance that out and make it less spicy. But if you like spice, this is so good. You're gonna love it so much. And again, you could do this. Look, take some seaweed, make a little mini sushi. Oh, it's gonna be hot. Before we move on to recipe number two, we have to talk about today's awesome sponsor, which is Care Of. If you guys haven't heard of Care Of, they are a vitamins and supplements company that sends you a beautiful box of customized vitamins for you every single month. So you have everything you need for the month when it comes to vitamins and supplements. It is super awesome. I have this lovely box right here. I take care of every single day, if I don't forget, which I mostly don't, I'm very good at this. I just keep this on my desk. It's very convenient. I remember because it's on my desk, it's in my site. 
and when it's in my sight, I take it, okay? And it's super easy because all you have to do is just take one of these little packets out, and these are compostable, by the way, so you can throw them in the compost. And if you guys need the instructions on how to compost, you can check out this website right here for you to compost. But yeah, it's really simple and easy. Everything I need is in this little package, and I just take one of these every day, and it just takes all of the extra work out of taking vitamins and supplements. So it's super easy to get started. All you have to do is take their five minute quiz, which is on their website. Link is down below for you to take it. It's a free quiz to take, and then it's gonna give you some recommendations as to what you might want to add into your pack based on your lifestyle. So whatever your goals may be, your current lifestyle, what you want to achieve in terms of your health and fitness, it takes all of that into consideration, and then it gives you a list of recommendations, and you can pick and choose what you want to add into your pack. So in my pack right here, I've got some veggie omega, which is to help maintain my cognitive health. We have cranberry, which supports urinary tract health. We also have some American ginseng. That's supposed to be great for your memory and focus. We also have some vegan vitamin D, which obviously is very important. We all know vitamin D is important, guys. Okay. We also have vitamin B12, which is, of course, crucial when you are following a plant-based diet. And there's also a probiotic blend, which is great for my gut health. And I also love their protein powder. So I just thought I'd show you guys. I have the chocolate protein powder and their vanilla protein powder. I use these all the time in my smoothies. I like to mix them in my uh, yogurt bowls and stuff like that. So they also have protein powders in case you are someone that wants to grow some muscle, okay? So if you guys want to try out Care Of, the link is down below for you to take your five minute quiz. And guys, you can get 50% off your first order. All you have to do is use the code vegan50 right here. Use that code and use the link down below for you to take that quiz and select all of the vitamins and supplements that your heart desires, okay? So thank you so much to Care Of for sponsoring today's video and hope you guys love them just as much as I do and let's move on to the next recipe all right you guys so for this recipe we are going to be making some sweet potato chan so chan is like a Korean word for like pan fried stuff <laughs> Actually, no, okay? It's like an all-around word for anything that we just kind of like pan fry. Clearly my Korean, maybe it's not the best. Okay, I do apologize. But this is made quite often during like some kind of special holiday. My mom makes this all the time, like new Korean New Year's or Korean Thanksgiving. This is made a lot, okay? People make jeon on Korean New Year's, Korean Thanksgiving, yes. So this is just a very easy jeon to make. It's stuff that you like coat in like a floury thing, like a batter, and then you pan fry. So that's called chan. So I'm gonna make some sweet potato chan. Now I try to find Japanese sweet potatoes, but I couldn't. So it's just regular sweet potato. You can use whatever sweet potato. You can use yam, whatever. Okay, do whatever you want. You do this with potato too, but it won't be as tasty. Okay, do it with sweet potato. So what you wanna do is you wanna cut it into small, like thin pieces, okay? So thin pieces, kind of like this. By the way, I haven't done this. <laughs> <laughs> my mom makes this all the time. I've helped her like make it, but I haven't actually, I don't think I've actually made it myself. I did ask her, I was like, mom, is this how I do it? She's like, yes. I don't know if she trusts me to do it right, but. So again, thin pieces, okay? This is what you're looking for. So now we have here approximately one sweet potato in different pieces. At this point, you wanna you know, start heating up your pan, okay? So I have a non-stick pan here, it's heating up, and then into like a bowl or something. You want to mix together very simple ingredients. Flour, I'm just using all-purpose flour. And let's just start with like, we'll do a third cup, because I can't find a quarter cup. So a third cup, I, don't, I honestly don't think like my mom measures this ever, so. You just make more as you need because the thing is sweet potatoes, they come in all shapes and sizes. So if I tell you one sweet potato, your sweet potato could be much larger than my sweet potato, so I can't help you, okay? So start with a third cup. I mean, I'm just gonna mix in the same amount of water, okay? Flour, water, and a bit of salt. Let's do just half a teaspoon of salt. Let's see if I need to add any more water. Actually, you know what? Double the amount of water. Again, I'm making this up as I go, so ignore me. Maybe, maybe not double, maybe like one and a half times the amount of water. My mom's gonna be watching this being like, Rose, what are you doing? That's our batter. Those are our ingredients. Very simple, very easy. So now we get the pan and for this recipe, the oil-free vegans, low oil vegans, please look away at this moment. This is going to be triggering. We're gonna add lots of oil. This is the one thing you'll need, okay? 
We're gonna start with one tablespoon. Let's see what it looks like. Maybe I'll just add a little bit more. You're gonna have to add more oil as you go. So we're starting with one and a half tablespoons. Again, this is one of those things that's really hard to measure because it just depends on a lot of other factors. So what you wanna do is just dunk it, okay? Dunk your lovely sweet potato pieces into the flour mixture and then just, woo! Super easy, guys, okay? And the thing is with these, you have to be patient. It takes a long time because the sweet potato is not cooked, you see? So you have to let it cook. So you wanna have it on low heat at this point. So you wanna heat up the oil first and then turn the heat down to like a low heat, okay? You don't want it to be too high because then it's gonna burn the outside. So you wanna make sure it's kind of like a medium low heat and you let it cook for some time, okay? So patience, unfortunately, you're gonna have to be patient. Like this is easy to make, but you just have to be a little bit patient with your time. There you go. Look at all that oil. Why not? Let's get a couple more in here. Ooh. Yeah, and then just let it cook for a few minutes. I'm gonna say like five minutes on medium low heat. And then I'll check back in just a little bit, okay? Alright you guys, so these are the finished sweet potato chun pieces. Okay, so this is just one batch. Now what I do is every time you cook one batch on the pan, just add a little extra oil so that it cooks nicely each time. And you wanna cook it until it is nice and golden like so, but again, it takes some time. I would say at least like 10 minutes or so per side uh, so that the sweet potato can cook as well. If you have the heat on too high, it's gonna burn the outside and not cook the sweet potato. So make sure you have the heat on low and just be patient and just let it cook, okay? Now, we're gonna try this because I'm excited. This is one of my favorite things ever and also I just decorated with a little bit of um, toasted sesame seeds it just makes it look nice and pretty and um, you don't have to do that part but I just thought I decorated okay let's eat this mm. Mm. guys it is nice and crispy on the outside nice thin layer of crispy goodness and then the inside is nice and soft and sweet oh you need to try this. This is so good. Mmm! So easy. It's like nature's candy. So good. Mmm! Try it out. So the final recipe is going to be a lazy mini kimbap. So kimbap is Korean seaweed rice rolls. They are very popular in Korea. We love to eat them on picnics, but they are like quite a bit of work in terms of preparing all the little ingredients. So I'm gonna show you guys a few little hacks here to make it easier. And we're also gonna make it easier to roll because we're making mini kimbap, which is basically just smaller, you know, pieces of kimbap. So you don't have to cut it up. You don't have to make sure that it's uh, not gonna break because it's just really easy to make. So. Let's get started. So a few things, a few ingredients that I recommend, some carrots and um, you know, you can cut it up, but that, you know, that takes some effort and like skill, okay? Sometimes we don't have those things. So instead, use a julienne peeler. So this you can get on like Amazon. I'll link this down below, but it's really easy because it just automatically juliennes your carrots. So that's what I would recommend if you are really lazy or buy your carrots pre-grated. So that's another thing you can do. There you go. So we got some julienned carrots. You don't need to too, too much. Just using one carrot here. Obviously, depending on how many you make. But again, let me show you like, this is another way of doing this. Which I actually sometimes prefer this method. See, that was almost easier. There we go. Beautiful. Tammuji. So this is, in Korean, it's called tammuji. This is pickled radish, okay? You can buy these at the Korean supermarket, okay? Pickled radish, aka tanmuji, okay? Tanmuji, guys, say it with me. Tanmuji, okay? Pickled radish, it's a little juicy. So I'm just gonna cut up into small pieces. Basically, you just want everything in small, thin pieces or long, thin pieces. So I don't know if there's like a method to this, but I'm just gonna do whatever I want. 
So basically, because we're making mini kimbap, you do want them to be not too, too long. I mean, maybe this is about three inches-ish, and you just want them thin like that. Simple, easy. Now, I usually prefer to buy the ones that are like not this bright yellow because I've heard that this bright yellow color is like cancer causing. I don't actually know if it's true, but I usually avoid the bright yellow and I usually buy the ones that are um, more of like a white color, but I couldn't find it this time. So we're just gonna have to make do with this bright yellow color, which bugs me, but you know, everything causes cancer, so it's okay. Another really key ingredient, spinach, okay? Spinach. So you can use baby spinach, you can use regular spinach. So we are going to saute. In normal Korean kimbap culture, you would saute these things separately. But because we're doing laziness, we're just gonna kind of saute it together, but start with this one. So now we are going to saute. We need a pan right here. Turn that up and let's saute. I feel like I don't need to add oil. Yeah, we're just gonna, whatever. Okay. Oh, I'm gonna sneeze. Woo, woo. No, it's gone, it's gone. Okay, so you wanna saute the carrots first, obviously, because they take longer. Okay, and you can just saute them and then put them to the side and then put in the spinach. I was gonna do it together and I realized it really takes not that much extra effort to do it separately. So first, initially just saute like so. You can add a little oil, okay, if you want. Or you can do, you know, do like me. Just cook it with no oil. Maybe add a little bit of water, no problem. And the thing is with kimbap, I normally would add in some other protein. I might want to add in some pan fried tofu. I love adding that into kimbap. Um, I also like to add, ooh, you know what's really good in kimbap? My vegan spam recipe. <gasps> I wish I had some, but I ate it all yesterday. If I had some, I would add that in. I highly recommend. I'll link that video down below. You need to make it. It is so good. It'll make your kimbap taste like crack, okay? So, um, or you can buy some smoked tofu just from the store, but smoked tofu is like a, it's like finding gold nowadays, okay? Finding smoked tofu is like finding gold. So anyways, um, I'm just gonna add a little splash of water, little splash to get those carrots cooking, okay? Little bit of salt, again, just, just eyeball it guys, okay? Secret ingredient, sesame oil, once again, not really secret ingredient, this is a must have ingredient. I'm just gonna add a teaspoon. Ooh. So sesame oil, like I mentioned, is very potent. It has a very strong flavor and a little goes a very long way. You don't need a lot. I'm just gonna put this to the side. Put it aside. And then, spinach. I would normally braise the spinach. I have a braised spinach recipe in my Everyday Asian Recipes ebook. It's basically like a Korean spinach side dish. It is like so good. But this is my lazy way of doing this. So we're just gonna like really quickly pan fry it. It takes two seconds. I just use about like, I don't know, like a big handful of spinach here. And then it's gonna wilt, turn into nothingness. So again, a little bit of salt, just a little bit. We're doing the same thing, okay? A little bit of salt, no need for a lot. And then add, again, a little bit of that sesame oil. Same amount, half a teaspoon. Mix, mix, mix. Set it aside. Now the reason why Korean people, we braise the spinach is because it cooks so quickly. So guys, I just realized I said braising when I, when I was talking about the spinach. I meant blanching. Okay, blanching the spinach, not braising. Guys, I should try, I should just not use these terms because I feel like I use them wrong all the time. Blanching spinach, okay? Blanching is when you cook something and then you like throw it into like cold water right after to like stop the cooking process. And I thought for some reason it was braising, but anyways, moving on. All right, you guys. So now that we have the ingredients ready, and again, highly recommend adding in some tofu. Highly recommend my tofu, my smoked tofu recipe. It's really, really good. I just have some rice here. This is a short grain rice. As I mentioned, short grain or sushi rice is what you need when you make this. Otherwise, it's not going to stick. This is a mixture of brown rice and white rice, uh, but they're both short grain, so it's gonna be a lot more sticky, and that's how you make sushi or kimbap. So, into the rice, salt. Again, once again, I'm just gonna like eyeball the salt. Eyeball the salt, guys, okay? And then we're gonna do some more toasted sesame oil. This is a key ingredient in kimbap. Like you, you need this, okay? Don't be like not using it or anything, okay? I'm actually gonna do one full teaspoon in the rice and then you wanna mix this well. So you want the rice to be warm, okay? But not like 
super hot, just warm. This is turning out to be less lazy than I had anticipated. But now we need some nori. This is nori, seaweed. Yaki nori, in Korean it's called kim, okay? Kimpa, that's literal translation to that is seaweed rice, okay? Kimpa, kim is seaweed, pap is rice. Kimpa, there you go. Korean lesson you never asked for once again. You're welcome. So normally with kimpa, you would use this whole thing and like make the roll, but we're gonna make it easier for you. So we're just gonna cut it, fold it in half. There we go, see? There we go. So basically you just wanna divide it into four pieces, okay? There we go, see? Beautiful. If you're extra lazy, do what like just, Make a makeshift kimbap as you eat it. Okay, just like put a little bit of each, roll it up and eat it. Or you can be a little less lazy and make the mini kimbap. So let's get started. All right, you guys, so what you need if you wanna make the kimbap, I like to always have a little bowl of water just so I can dampen my hands. I find that it's just like, it just makes it a lot easier, okay? So you just take a little bit, okay? There's no rule to this, not really anyway. And then just add your little ingredients. So easy, so simple. And then, little piece. Look how cute! Isn't that adorable? And now, let's let's see if I can do this. So you just take the bottom, okay? Just roll it over. This might be a little bit too far, who knows? And then, if you want, you just wet it, just ever so slightly. I mean, and again, like, if it kind of like breaks, it doesn't really matter, because you can eat it right away. You know what I mean? Let's do one more, put this aside. All right, you guys, so this is the beautiful, almost final product, but I do wanna add another additional touch. A little bit more toasted sesame oil. Now. I mean, you can just literally put some on your fingers and just place a little bit on top. A final, final touch. Again, this part is totally optional. You don't have to do this. You can just eat it um, after you roll it up. But guys, when I say Korean people, we use sesame oil and sesame seeds for everything. This is what I mean. That's how you make mini kimbap. So easy, so simple, and so cute. Can we talk about it? It's so cute. It's super simple, and we're gonna have to try one right now. Okay, I have this one right here. It's a little bit ugly, so we're gonna try this one. Cheers! Let's try it. It's gonna be good. Let's go. Mm. Mm. There's no way this won't be good. Oh my god, you need to, you need to make this. my three lazy Korean recipes video. I hope you guys found this helpful. I hope you learned something. Maybe it's a random Korean word that you never asked to learn, but you learned it today. Or it's one of these delicious dishes that you learned how to make. These are all so, so good. And I really hope you guys try all of these out. Um, I do think they are pretty easy to make, okay? <laughs> so hopefully you find it easy as well. Let me know down below your thoughts. And of course, all of the recipes, the written ingredients and everything will be in a blog post as always. That's gonna be linked down below. And thank you so much to Kara for sponsoring today's video. Make sure you are taking care of yourselves and make sure that you are taking the right supplements and vitamins to supplement your diet. Don't forget to check out Care Of by using the link down below to take that really quick quiz. And then all you have to do is use the code vegan50 to get yourself 50% percent off your first order. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy it, please give it a big thumbs up and please subscribe if you haven't already. And if you guys want more vegan Asian or vegan Korean recipes, check out my Everyday Asian Recipes ebook, which is linked down below as well. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!